Let's see how you pronounce Canada. Like, is it Canada? Candida? 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 That, that sounds like my neighbor down the hall in 3G. Hey, what's up, Candida? <laughs> I'll see you, girl. Candida. It's Candida. I've been doing a lot of what the book Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford recommends over the past year, and I feel great, so I wanted to share it with you guys. The book has a whole multiple sclerosis section, and the first thing they say about it is, those with MS frequently suffer from Candida albicans overgrowth, which must be addressed first. And when you get to the Candida's albicans overgrowth section, it's huge, and there's so much information to digest. Well, I... That's a bad pun, I'm realizing. It's so much information that maybe I might break it up into several vlogs, but I highly, highly recommend that you get a copy of the book. The quick and dirty version is candidiasis is the overgrowth of candida yeast-like fungi in the body and illustrates the Eastern medicine concept of dampness, which causes a bunch of different problems. But to name a few, problems like low immunity, feeling of heaviness and sluggishness, allergies to food and environmental substances, mental dullness, a scattered, unfocused mind, and other pathogenic moisture and yeast conditions. So hold up, you mean to tell me that part of this illness is a gigantic yeast infection? Ooh, I got to get this under control because it is turning my life upside down, baby. While it is normal to have some Candida. present in your body, it appears that people with Candida. overgrowth have weakened immune systems which prevents the proper absorption of nutrients in the digestive tract, which inhibits the proper absorption of specific amino acids and other nutrients through the digestive tract. And then it gets into the body tissues and other places where you just don't want yeast sitting around and then you get sick. All this candida, candida being in places in the body that it shouldn't be taxes the immune system. And when the immune system is taxed, immunity overall breaks down. And when immunity breaks down like that, it just paves the way for autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and multiple sclerosis. Yay. All right, cool story, bro. You mispronounced candida a couple times and told me about how bad it is. So how do I control it? Again, that would take a bunch of videos. But for now, I'll just say avoid carbs because they feed that yeast. Instead, go for grains like millet, amaranth, and quinoa. Another set of things to avoid, sweet and starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes and yams. And that brings me great sadness because I love slicing up some sweet potatoes and baking them and they taste so good. Instead, go for things like carrots, parsnips, and beets. Other things to avoid, sugar and molasses and maple syrup and even some fruits because all they do is just propagate yeast in the body. Instead, things like lemons and limes and pomegranates and berries can be enjoyed in moderation. Avoid meat and dairy because they just propagate yeast in the body. Man, this yeast infection is getting complicated, baby. I don't think there's ever been a simple yeast infection anyway. Instead, fermented foods like raw saltless sauerkraut and spore-based probiotics that contain... I just got to read this because what? l sporogenes, l sporogenes, how you pronounce that? And B. laterosporus are quite effective at eating yeast. Avoid nuts, seeds, avocados, and other oily foods. Look, don't get it twisted. He's not saying that these foods are bad, just that people with candida overgrowth should avoid them because these foods overwork the liver and the pancreas and should be used sparingly. Instead, flaxseed and its oil and oils rich in oleic acid, like cold-pressed, small-batched, extra-version olive oil. You've heard me talk about that before, hmm? So I'm hunting down the proper flaxseed oils and put them in the mix, and I'll keep you posted on how I'm doing. I've already added small-batch, cold-pressed, extra-version olive oil to the mix, not just not cooking with it, just drizzling it on my food after I've steamed it already. And it has helped my gait. Like, it's just smoothed out my gait like a lot. Another thing I'm adding to the mix is food grade hydrogen peroxide. I've tried taking it before, but to see results, you have to take it multiple times a day for multiple days back to back to back. And I didn't really commit to the schedule, so it was tough to see results. 
So hopefully the vlog will be something extra to help keep me on schedule and help push me to keep this regimen going so I can report back to you guys. Ooh, child, I got to get my yeast infection under control. So I'm gonna go work on that. Okay, bye.